Hey everyone, we've got a brand new tutorial here which covers using Statesmith with Draw.io. We already have a really good tutorial, tutorial number three, which covers Plant UML. So if you're more interested in Plant UML, that's cool. Go check it out. Uh, tutorial three, that is. Tutorial three and four follow basically the same layout. It's just how you choose to diagram. So we'll we'll get quick to uh, to generating some code here, but first we should talk about the setup. So yeah, we're gonna get to exercise Mario in a state machine, but first we uh, yeah we'll talk about the setup. So to make this more efficient for you learning, uh, click here to download. <laughs> got a typo there. Uh, click here to download the zip file, which contains the tutorial for. So extract it, and then you can uh, work alongside. The next thing we need to do is install or download the Statesmith CLI. So there, there's two main options. You can download a pre-built binary to your computer. And the advantages of this is that you don't need to install .NET or have it. You don't need to install Statesmith CLI or anything. You basically just download the binary, put it on your path, or put it somewhere that you can access it. Or two, uh, if you already have a .NET SDK or you want an easier workflow, um, install the Statesmith CLI. It's super easy. It's like a one-liner. Uh, it's generally the recommended path if you're okay installing a .NET SDK. Uh, so I've already got that installed. And actually, I'm going to be using, uh, I'm on Windows, but I'm using WSL2 to basically be in an Ubuntu shell. And I have SSCLI downloaded just as a binary and put in my local bin here so it's on my path. So I haven't installed it or anything. And I don't actually have .NET installed at all here. So just to show that you know we can do it however you want to work. All right, so let's go, uh, oops. It says CLI, say version. And we see that we got 0.14, that's good. For this tutorial, you need at least 0 0.11. Uh, I recommend going with the latest 0 0.14. And now the next thing to do is download draw.io. There's a couple different ways you can get uh, or use draw.io to create diagrams. I highly recommend the official desktop version of draw.io. It's like the offline version um, from either of these links here. This one just points to that one there. Uh, but there's also the unofficial VS Code extension which is very popular and generally works, but I don't recommend starting with it because it's very rarely updated. I think I don't think it's been updated in a year. There's a number of bugs there, which are generally minor, but when you're learning how to use Statesmith already, which is a kind of a new tool, which you know is cool, but also sometimes like tricky and there's lots of different ways you can use it, kind of like a Swiss army knife, stick to the simple official one. Uh, and then after you're happy with Statesmith, and uh, you know you you understand the workflow, then try out the unofficial VS Code extension. And if you ignore all my advice, which is totally fine, who cares? Uh, do not use the unofficial VS Code extension with draw.io.svg files. It will screw you up. Okay, enough of that. Let's head on to lesson one. Okay, so we're gonna make Mario dance here. And uh, if you uh, if you're like me and you've opened this in VS Code. Um, it's important to, well, let's browse into lesson one here, but then on our terminal, we're also going to go into lesson one, just so that we don't forget when we run our code generation. All right, so uh, because we support six different languages, I can't make, I don't have enough time, I guess I could, but I don't have enough time to make a, a tutorial for each individual language, so all of the non-language language specific examples are gonna use HTML and JavaScript just because everyone has a browser which can debug them, run them, uh, and generally they're easy to, easier to interact with as well. All right, with that out of the way, let's do our code generation. So we are gonna go and make sure we're in lesson one directory. This is CLI run dash H for here. So we're gonna run it in this directory. Okay, we've seen it generate two files, a JavaScript file and a simulator, which we're gonna explore in a second here, but we'll follow the flow of the, the, di or, uh, the tutorial here. We're gonna go interact with the state machine here. So I'll just uh, open the diagram up for a second, but here's a, a quick peek at the hierarchical state machine. Basically the, the thick arrows are 
the flow of getting hit. So when we're small, uh, if we get hit, we go to defeated. Uh, we revive with the mushroom. Another mushroom makes us into Super Mario. A fire flower makes us into Fire Mario. If we get hit, we go back to super. Hit again, we go to small. Uh, and hit again to defeat. Now in any of these three states, because this is a hierarchical state machine, if Thwomp hits us, you know, the crushy thing, if we get crushed, we go straight to defeat. So let's go, uh, let's go play with that and explore it. We'll go up just like we'd said, go to Super Mario. More mushrooms with Super Mario doesn't do anything. Fire Flower turns us into Fire Mario. More Fire doesn't do anything for us. Uh, if we get hit, we go down to Super. Hit again, we go to Small. Hit again, we're defeated. Unlike the real game, a mushroom is going to revive us. And we'll, we'll get up to Fire again and just show that Thwomp will crush us right away. So now we're going to open up mariostatemachine.draw.io. Now, this, uh, this diagram was generated with the new SSCLI template, which supports multiple pages. And so we'll just take a quick tour here. We're right now on the design page, but there's also a config page here. And we can see that, uh, well, there's, there's a note up here, which gives you basically more details for the various settings that you can apply inside of here. And basically all we've told it to do is use the transpiler for JavaScript. So we're targeting JavaScript for this demo. We also have a notes and shapes and tips page here. First, I'm just going to get rid of these sidebars. It's got a whole bunch of helpful links in here. It's got some shortcuts that you might find useful. It's got different ways of um, declaring your state machine. Uh, so this is the new way. This is the old way here. And actually, you should definitely check out this link right here. Uh, let's go actually and click on this one. This is a wiki page here, which walks us through uh, just a ton of useful stuff here. So, um, you know, common beginner issue, which we'll, we'll cover a little bit later, but this one is super important. How to get a proper dark mode, make some space, how to pan, uh, you know, connecting shapes, editing labels, a whole bunch of stuff. We'll, we'll go through it here in video, but it's a super useful resource. The important part that I want you to uh, to understand, and I can bring this over here, is that Statesmith runs your exact code. So whatever you type in your diagram is going to be what gets generated. Uh, and there we have different tips uh, to you know make it easier if you want to get complicated. Um, but by default, we don't do anything crazy here. What you type there ends up in your state machine. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll go take a quick detour there, but this is the global function, Fire Mario, which is getting called when your state machine runs. So if we look in index.html, we basically got a, a div for Mario, and then we've linked up a bunch of buttons. Basically, uh, we create our Mario state machine, we tell it to start, and now here are the global functions that our state machine actually calls while it's running. So that small Mario, and actually we can go see where this is called, um, so let's, let's jump into the generated state machine here, actually. Our generated state machine has the uh, event enumerations, the state enumerations, uh, the start function here. We'll, we'll collapse that because that's not too important. And here's kind of like the, the crux of the state machine. We'll, we'll close this for now. This is the dispatch event. Now, uh, there's different ways that we can generate our code. I'm showing you the new default. This is uh, the balance to algorithm, which uses kind of a traditional switch case statement. Uh, but there's also algorithm balanced one, which uses function pointers. You can use whichever one you like. This one's probably better for beginners. But you can see when we're uh, in the small state here, when somebody dispatches an event to us like hit. Uh, so let's go take a look at that. So when we're small, and we get hit, so this event happens here. We can just navigate to this. I like that the generated code, you know, it is long in terms of lines, but the content is actually quite small. The majority of the generated code is really trying to help explain everything that's happening. So step one, um, it's going to exit the small state, so it's gonna go up till it gets to our root. Um, then there's no transition action, so nothing happens. And then we enter the defeat state, and then it returns. Like there's nothing too crazy about the generated code in uh, in Statesmith. It's uh, it's very capable, 
but it's also very readable. Now, before I just blah, blah, blah forever, I want to make sure I cover all the points here. Right, the simulator. The simulator is new. Uh, this is uh, driven largely by uh, MB, one of our contributors, which I'm very thankful for. Okay, so I've opened our tutorial for Lesson 1 Mario State Machine Simulator web page. And this gets generated every time you run your code generation, unless you uh, tell Statesmith that you don't want this generated file. You basically got your small, your super, your fire states, your defeated state, and we can send events over here. So we're currently small. If we give us a mushroom, we go to super, and you can see we took this transition. Uh, if we send another mushroom, we can see eating tons of mushrooms. Nothing's actually happening here. Uh, well, sorry, we're dispatching events. But again, this super state doesn't listen to the mushroom event. So let's give it the fire flower. And we can see that it entered the state, and then it would execute this action, fire Mario. And let's go ahead and get a crush going in here. Boom. And then you see it would have executed the function, defeated Mario. Now, there are a couple limitations to the simulator. It does behave correctly. So like sending events and checking the side pane here work correctly. But sometimes um, the library we used for this visualization, uh, mermaid.js, it's not perfect. It can't draw everything or render everything correctly. So sometimes uh, a transition uh, will be a little bit hidden, or in this case, it's a little bit hard to see. In this case, this arrow is coming off of the initial state here. So we will improve it over time. And as the mermaid.js library improves, uh, this will improve too. But it it is a really helpful tool, even with those kind of visual limitations. Uh, to explore your state machines. Now, I believe that's all I wanted to talk about in lesson one here. So I'll pause the video here or stop the video here. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in lesson two.